Uh, let's pray. Father, we thank you for this uh, wonderful morning uh, that you uh, gathered uh, your uh, children in the, in the church to worship you. Um, along this uh, life journey, we know that uh, you use your word and through the Holy Spirit, you lead us and guide us to the target, to the end, um, to the destination that, that you will us to do, to go. Father, we uh, commit this time, especially when we are uh, reading the Bible and getting some message from you. We really pray that uh, you open our eyes and open our hearts so that we can understand what the, you are going to tell us this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today we are looking at uh, Psalm uh, 91. Um, let's uh, do a little bit um, uh, exegesis first. Um, as you know, when we are looking, uh, reading the book of Psalms, 150 uh, Psalms all together, and some Psalms, there are some superstitions, but some they have no. Um, in Psalm 91, can you uh, find any superscription there? What's the first word of this psalm? Is in using uh, reading the English Bible, this the, this ye, the, right? Uh, but how about uh, Psalm 90, the, the psalm just preceding, preceding uh, 91? There's a superscription, that a prayer of Moses, the man of God, right? So uh, I think it's a very uh, safe assumption to uh, let us know that when you are reading the book of Psalms, whenever there's a superscription, it provides us a sort of uh, background to lead, uh, help us to understand what this uh, psalm is talking about. But when there's no superscription uh, in that psalm, we can safely assume that this is uh, connected with the psalm preceding. That is, when we are looking at uh, reading Psalm 91, it is some it has some connection with Psalm 90. That means Psalms 90 and 91 should be read together, because when the day and the times, uh, the editor of the of these uh, uh, psalms, when they do this uh, editing, they put it together uh, as some. Uh, purposes on this. So, uh, if you look, just look at read uh, Psalm 91, just uh, as we just uh, read it, um, if we have to guess uh, what really is the, the background, is the meaning of that. We can say that, oh, this uh, someone is uh, facing some difficulty, or this uh, person is uh, traveling a lot and uh, maybe uh, facing some dangerous uh, situations. That uh, this. Uh, uh, Children of God, uh, they pray to God that uh, during these difficulties or dangerous uh, situations, God will pro uh, protect them. But what is actually the, the situation behind this? When we have to find this, we have to look at the Psalm 90, the, uh, 90 and 91 together. That means um, Psalm 90 and 91, we believe that uh, this is written by uh, Moses it's together. Psalm 90, if we have to take a look at the glance of uh, Psalm 90, uh, well, what, is, what is, uh Psalm 90 talking about? He's talking about the eternal God. And he's talking about the mortality of, of man. Um, man is uh, usually 70 years old and will pass away. And maybe some are stronger, maybe 80 years. One day we have to pass away. And so what's the meaning of, uh, of life? So the, in Psalm 90, um, will be uh, verses, verse well, 12. Moses uh, tells us that, teach us to number our days carefully so that we may develop wisdom in our hearts. So this is uh, how uh, Moses teach the, uh, the Israelites to look at the, what is life, what is really uh, the meaning of life? If we are just uh, facing short, this short period of uh, time, just 70 years or 80 years, one day we are going to pass away, we are going to die, 
what's the meaning of this life? So uh, Moses, for Moses, he said, oh, let us pray to God that we ask God give us this, this wisdom that we can count our days. We can uh, number our days carefully in a wise way. That means we have to use it in a wise way. And to the end of uh, Psalm 90, the last verse is, Let the favor of the Lord our God be on us. Establish for us the work of our hands. Establish the work of our hands. So for Moses, he teaches the Israelites that the meaning of life is uh, during this short period of time, short periods of life, the most meaningful thing is to work for God. To get something, some hands, handy works, to work, to serve God, to glorify God. This is the meaning of life. And then to Psalm 91, the, you, you know that, you realize that the tone changed radically. This is not uh, urging you to, to serve God, to do more, to, to uh, uh, glorify how to, the way how, how you can glorify God. Uh, the tone changed radically. From urging you to work or to serve, it becomes uh, telling you, urging you to, uh, how about you uh, think a little bit, stop there and think, can we serve God with our own wisdom? Can we serve God when we are, our life is full of uh, dangerous, dangers? And when, can we serve God and we, we are so immature? And can we serve God if we are have facing so many uh, difficulties in our life, in our studies, in our work, in our relationship with our families and our, uh, our friends? Can we serve God with just this uh, status, just this being? Can we serve God with, with this, uh, so many weaknesses? So in Psalm 91, uh, Moses changed the tone. He just changed the one, changed to what's the strength or the power within you that you can serve God more effectively. So when we read, uh, read 91, so um, I'll focus two points uh, on, or two passages on uh, this uh, Psalm 91. The first passage is uh, uh, on verses 1 and 2. Here he says, the one who lives under the protection of the Most High. Okay, I'm reading from the HCSB uh, uh, version. Uh, there's maybe something from the NIV or the, the, the version you're, you're reading. Um, the one who lives under the protection of the Most High dwells in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. So this is uh, how um, Moses tells the Israelites. Along this uh, journey in the wilderness, we believe that, uh, biblical, biblical scholars believe that Psalms 90 and 91 is a psalm written by Moses or taught by, by Moses to the Israelites during this, uh, their 40 years in the wilderness. So during these 40 years of uh, wilderness, that's why Moses uh, mentioned uh, and if a man is strong enough, maybe he will live long enough uh, to uh, up to 80 years. Because when uh, God called Moses to lead the Israelites out of Egypt, uh, how old is he? He's 80, okay? So he said, I'm a strong man. I've, I'm called by God to lead the, the uh, Israelites out of Egypt. I'm serving God. But what's the power within me? then I can really use the power to, to serve God. I'm not using my this old age, 80 years old, old man, the power of this old man. So fragile, so weak to serve you, to lead you in the wilderness. No. What I depend is what? Is on the promise of God. So in Psalm 91, Moses share his own experience that the one who lives under the protection of Almost High, who's the one? Maybe he's talking about himself. I am the one. I'm the one who lives under the protection of the Most High. And this one, I, dwells in the shadow of the Almighty. When I 
Whenever I'm not counting on myself, whenever I'm uh, turn my eyes upon my Lord, then I live under the protection of the Most High. And at this moment, I dwell in the shadow of the Almighty. So I can say to the Lord, You are my refuge, my fortress, and my God, in whom I trust. But there's something very special in verse 1. What's that? Uh, here you, uh, Moses used two different verbs to describe his relationship with God. Uh, I used the uh, HCSP version. Here he says, I live under the protection. The first, word is, the first verb is live. And the second verb is similar to that is drowse. Or in the NIV, the, you said the first word is drow. Okay? The second word, verb is abide. Right? Huh? What? For what? Rest. Okay. Abide and rest. Okay. That's using two different uh, words, but they are similar in, in meaning. Okay. And then uh, Moses mentioned the name of God. Two, two names, two different names. The first one is the Most High. The second name is Almighty. Right? They're almost the same or similar. But it's almost similar that there's something inside it. There's, there's some difference. What's the difference? Let's first now look at the most high, the word most high, the name of God. What's the meaning of most high? Most high is uh, the up, the highest. If we uh, use it in, other, in another way, you can express this. He is the, the Lord of Lord, the King of Kings. He's the King. He's in a high place. He's in a high position. He's the King. But the most high is he's a King of Kings. Uh, it, the God is uh, in a high position. This one is a high position. He is Lord. But the most high is the Lord of Lords. So when Moses uh, called, claimed God uh, to be the most high, that means he had confessed that God is his creator. God created him. And God is the creator of everything. God is the creator of the mankind. So no one, no one in this world is given the real secure protection unless or other than God can give him. That only God can do this. So he, what, he put his trust not on uh, someone is very important. Okay, when we, when we face some difficulties, who is the, one, the first one to think of? You give him a call, write, write him or her an email. Uh, who, is, who is that, that person? Maybe that person is your buddy, your close friend, your uh, spouse. Uh, this should be some very close connection. And you think you can trust him or her so that we, when you face some difficulties, you have to tell her, to tell him first. Or when you have some very, ah, very joyous, joyous experience, Okay, who is the, the first one we're going to, to contact? The, the one very close to you. But for, for Moses, for the Psalmist, the first one he contact is the most high. He's the highest, the king of kings and the lord of lords. Okay, but if we come to the second, the second name of, uh, of God, Moses used is almighty. In fact, almighty is not the name. Almighty is, is a power. But the God, what Moses um, knows, this God is a very powerful and most powerful God. So when Moses uh, uh, used the term most high, it means that uh, he looked at God as a that very high position. Someone has a very high position, but doesn't mean that he has that power. And that power, he's going to use that power to protect you. But this God, whom uh, Moses knows, he has that high position. And he is willing to use the most the power to protect the one who calls upon him. This is a very close relation between God and Moses. Sometimes we have uh, we study the Bible. We have, uh, we, we, if we uh, attend the church, for a um, period of time, long enough, that we uh, come, came, come across so many uh, biblical stories, 
the miracles uh, Jesus worked, or uh, the stories uh, in the Old Testament, Old Testament or New Testament, or even if you uh, after after at the end of year of this year, I assume uh, or most of you have uh, read through the Bible once. Okay, that means uh, say the typical uh, stories will be familiar to you, but what is the relationship between God and you? This is real, the main points here. What is the relationship? Is this God and otherness somewhere very, very powerful there, but has no relationship with me, no contact with me? Or is this God, he's willing to protect me whenever I call upon his name? For Moses, this God is his personal God. This God is most high. This God is almighty. And he can pray to this God that you are my refuge. You are my fortress. And on you, I trust. And the second thing we can uh, uh, learn from this, uh, this verse one is that these two different verbs, live and dwell, have different meanings. In fact, in the original uh, uh, Hebrew verb, this live means to sit down. And the, word, the second verb, drowse, means to stay overnight. You can see that there's a difference in intensity. Imagine one day I uh, call upon you or visit, visit your home and I knock the door, okay, and you open the door and oh, Reverend Hui, uh, nice to meet you. Oh, uh, yeah, nice to meet you. Very nice day. Oh, so, oh, so you, can, you can go away. That's all right. Uh, is this the way you can treat me? I don't think it's a very, very polite way, okay? Uh, at least you can you invite me into your, your, your house and uh, how about sit down, have a cup of coffee, okay? How about you sit down and I have a cup of coffee? It's an act or show of uh, courtesy. Uh, it means we welcome you. We can sit down and talk a little bit and share a little bit, okay? I won't spare you a very, very much time, but at least I can sit down and say, uh, uh, share a little bit, okay? This is the, the verb here, it means. The one who lives is not, not just standing at the door and uh, say hi, hi and bye, okay? Oh, uh, God, you're, you're so kind. Oh, this is a very wonderful, wonderful, wonderful day. Uh, good morning, God, good morning, Jesus, hi and bye. Uh, it's not sit down, not, not the meaning of sit down. The meaning of sit down is really the, uh, that action to invite Jesus to have some sharing with you. You can talk with him and you will open your heart to listen what Jesus tells you. But is that enough? For Moses, it's not enough. For Moses, he will expect more. What he expects is stay overnight. Oh, it's so wonderful that we can talk with Jesus. It's so wonderful that we can listen to, Je to the teaching of Jesus. How about we not just uh, sit down and have a coffee? How about have dinner? How about, oh, it's so late now. Stay overnight. <coughs> Leave tomorrow. This is the, the attitude, the manner that Moses uh, uh, used to God. How about we have closer relationship? Many years ago, I read a story uh, from the British Digest uh, magazine. And there's a, about a lady uh, who, who shared his, her uh, witness. Well, she's uh, a, a Christian. She had been uh, going to the church since she uh, was a small uh, uh, girl. She uh, attended Sunday school, uh, worship, uh, children choir, and read the Bible, uh, read the, listened to the, uh, these miracles of uh, words by Jesus. Oh, so marvelous. Uh, so when she grew up, uh, she attended the fellowship and became a teenager. But there's something happened during her teenage, teenage uh, that period that she has some um, sort of uh, very bad experience with her uh, brothers and sisters in the fellowship. Maybe some conflict, 
or, or, or argument or quarrel, that she became a little bit by little bit by little bit, um, she stayed away from the fellowship, and then she stayed from the church, and eventually she just left the church. Then when she grew up, she find a new job, and she married, and had two children, and but she find that her life is so chaos, chaotic. Everything is just messy. I don't know. I don't know why. She should. I don't know why. Uh, my husband has a stable income. Financially, it's no problem. I have two children. They're lovely. But I don't know why. That many times she just lose her, lost her temper. So that the her family just suffers. So the, the relationship with the family is so bad. And the relationship with uh, her friends is so bad. One day, uh, when she was uh, tidying up her uh, study, and she found uh, the Bible that uh, was given by the church when she was baptized. Okay, I think some of you have that Bible also. But, uh, but for her, the Bible is uh, covered with dust. So she just opened the Bible, and recall, just recall the, some uh, biblical verses she learned that, uh, when she was uh, young, and uh, learned to try to pray to God that um, she was taught that way she can pray. And she can start to do that. When she started to do that, they feel that there's something different. There's some peace within her. But this cannot help her to go through this messy life. Then a Christian friend visited her, and she shared her uh, this uh, uh, trouble with, uh, with her friend. The friend is a very strong Christian, and she suggested this lady that, how about uh, the, the title of that passage is Five Minutes a Day. How about you spend five minutes a day in the early morning before, before you do anything? Just this five minutes, you read the Bible and you really take that effort to pray to God and to listen to what the Bible tells you. You, you won't use up, use up long, just five minutes a day, five minutes. And then she started this five, the journey of the five minutes a day. And next morning, she got up early when the, her uh, family is still uh, this sleeping. Uh, she got up early and uh, opened the Bible, read the Bible, really think what, tells, what God is going to tell her. And then she prayed to God. One day passed, one week passed. A month passed. About a couple of, of months, this Christian lady, uh, a Christian friend, visited her again, and this lady shared his share her uh, uh, witness. Oh, your method is very good. Five minutes a day is not enough for me. Now it's thirty minutes, thirty minutes a day. Oh, this so sweet. The hour is so sweet. These thirty minutes, I can really think, meditate. What? God is going to tell me. I'm not just saying hi and bye to God. I not only sit down, have a coffee, and chit chat with Jesus. Now, I want to stay overnight with Jesus. So you see, this is the meaning of this verse. This is the experience of the Moses. That he lives under the protection. Not just sit down, not just hi. God you know my trouble. These men are always complaining. Okay, you know all. You, you know my my uh, uh, what I think. You know these people how how bad these people are. Okay, and okay, you can go away. No, Jesus is not. Uh, Moses is not doing this. Moses is inviting God to help him to face these problems. The second uh, passage I want to share within this uh, psalm is uh, on verses 10, uh, 14 to 16. In verses 14 to 16, 
uh, here we will call this uh, the promise of God by using the four I will. What are the promises of God? Here in verses 14 to 16. So when you trust in God, when you want to stay, are willing to spend the time to stay overnight with God, so you see what God promised you. God said, I will deliver him. I will exalt him. I will answer him. I will be with him. I will rescue him and give him honor. And I will satisfy him with a long life. So, so different. In Psalm 90, Moses just said, oh, life is very short, just 70 years or 80 years, okay? But here, at the end of Psalm 91, he changed differently. Okay, <laughs> Moses said, if we depend on God, we trust in God, God promised you he will satisfy you with a long life and show you my salvation. These six uh, promises is very precious to us. I think every one of us wants to get this promise, okay? But this is a promise God gave you. Do you believe that? Do you believe that? Do you believe that if you are willing to take, take that effort to stay overnight with Jesus, you spend, really spend, use your heart to listen to the words of God every day, to pray earnestly to God, to trust Him. He is your Creator. He is your Savior. Even if you really trust in Him, then God promised He will deliver you when you are in trouble. Who can tell? Who can guarantee that we are, oh, I am safe. I won't face trouble. Who can, who can guarantee yourself? No one can guarantee yourself, okay? We can, we, everyone have, of us has, has to face different degrees of troubles. God said, I promise you, I will deliver you. I will exhort you. When you call me, I will answer you. I will answer your prayers. I'll be with you when you, you are in, in trouble. I will rescue you and give you honor. I will satisfy you with long life. It is really not only the quantity of life, also the quality of life. This life is not just a physical life. This life is a spiritually lit physical life. God cares about you. God wants you to be really blessed by the words of God, to be really blessed by the Holy Spirit. But there are some conditions. There are two conditions uh, uh, connected to these six uh, promises. What are these two, con uh, two conditions? In verse 14, he says, because he is lovingly devoted to me. Oh, I think I enemy is just use uh, loving me, okay? But here he said, lovingly devoted to me. I think this meaning is very quite clear. The first condition is that if you trust in God, you have to love God. If you love God, uh, according to what Jesus tells us, we have to follow his, uh, his commandments. If you really love God, we do what Jesus tells us to do. That is love. Do you love your wife or your husband that you go contrary to him or her? I don't think so. If you love someone, you will do what is the best for him or for her. Jesus knows. Jesus knows you. He knows you. He knows your weakness. He's, he knows what you, your, the troubles you're facing. He, he knows that we cannot count on our own ability to overcome all these troubles. Jesus loves you. But you have to love Jesus. It's devoted to him wholeheartedly. And then the second condition is that when he calls out in verse 15, when he calls out to me, I will answer him. This is a condition. God will answer your prayer. But what is that condition? That condition is that you have to call upon him. You have to respond to him. 
So in verses one and two, if if we are talking about the that strength, that spiritual strength, a Christian can have within us. And in verses fourteen to sixteen, we are talking about how we respond to our God. Jesus knows you. But I wonder, you really know Jesus? I I call we call an experience when uh, one once I um, went into mainland China from Hong Kong. You see, um, we just used a, that like a sort of identity card we call the permit to enter the mainland China. And when we were lining up to at the at the custom. And I saw in front of uh, of this line, uh, there's a gentleman there, and the custom, the officer there, and asked him, "Show me your permit." And that uh, gentleman said, mm, "I don't have a permit." Well, you don't have a permit. How can I let you go into into our country? He said, "Oh, because your president knows me." Oh, you know, the president of China knows me. Okay. Then the officer, the type on the computer, da, 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 da. then oh, oh, something comes up. Oh, yeah, yeah, we we'll welcome you. Uh, we we'll get welcome. Okay, let's we'll we'll get someone to to uh, greet him and and and, and lead him. Uh, go ahead. And just uh, after this uh, gentleman, there's another gentleman there. For, well, he said, "My president, I, your president knows me. It's very, he said, is that word okay? He said, he said, uh, catch word. So when he, when the officer asked him, show me your permit, he said, oh, your president knows me. Then, <laughs> then officer pressed type, type the computer and press the alarm. <laughs> press the alarm. Then <laughs> the security guard just grab him. And that man uh, struggled. I'm not fair. That man said the president knows me. Uh, uh, I know the president. Uh, they, they can go go to that. And I said I know the president. And I cannot go to. Uh, yes, you know the president, but the president doesn't know you. Okay, that that rich man because he's uh, donating so many so much money in in in, our, in the country to to build. Uh, uh, hospitals and schools and all sorts of uh, facilities. So, of course, the president knows him. He knows the president and the president knows him. But this guy, no, he's not, he's not doing these things. He knows the president, but the president doesn't know him. This thing is very meaningful that you know Jesus. If you're in a church long enough, you know his, Jesus' name. You must heard Jesus' name. You know Jesus. But... Really, you have that right connection with Jesus. What Jesus wants is the loving devotion to Him. You have to build the right relationship with God. One time, I remember when I was a, 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 a sort of hiking, and uh, there's a sort of small, the, a narrow path. And under the trees, uh, it was a very nice day, and I just uh, enjoyed that. Uh, so that scenery is very, very, very beautiful day. So I said, walk and walk, and and suddenly I just uh, realized that in, in front of me, the 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 path there's a, a steep slope, and I just slip. When I slip, what I what I the uh, subconsciously, I just grab something. I, I what I can grab, okay? I just, and it happened that I grabbed a sticker. Uh, otherwise, I, I fall, fell in, in, into that this steep slope. But I grabbed this desk leg. I just lie down on on the on the path. But some of my belongings, the bottles, uh, they fell fell down the, that uh, deep slope. I think this story is very meaningful. Every, every, every time when I recall this experience, I think this is the spiritual life journey of a Christian. We cannot tell. Sometimes when you are enjoying that so wonderful day, they say something in front of you that you do, doesn't real, you don't do not realize, and do, you just stumble or slip. 
and maybe you fell into that steep slope unless you grab something. What is that something in your life in times of trouble or in times of danger? For Moses, it's very clear. My God, my most high God, my almighty God, I grab him. This year we have this uh, theme. Uh, what's the theme of this year? Equip the saints, evangelize the world. Any meaning to you? You think it seems that to evangelize the world, we have to do do something. I'm a Christian. I have to serve. That's right. That's right. We have to do something. We love God, but before loving God, before doing this, before doing this, first of all, you equip yourself. I like that um, uh, master builder we taught uh, in the, uh, our master life that the stages of life, of Christian life, stages of Christian life. Uh, we, you know, when I'm in the primary school, I look forward to promoted to high school, secondary school, to high school. I, when I, I graduate from high school, I look forward to entering in in the university. When I have an undergrad, I look forward to a graduate study. I'm always looking forward to something higher, to a higher stage. How about your spiritual life? How about your spiritual journey? Are you looking forward to a higher level of your journey? Higher level of journey? This is still the beginning of a year. Always we would like to have some wishes of this year. What is your plan? What's your goal? What's the target? So that at the end of this year, when you look back, you can achieve that target. Can you set this goal that within this year, you get better equipment, better equipped, so then you can evangelize the world, so then you can share the, the gospel you know, more effectively. We pray that every one of you, every one of us, would respond to God in this way. We trust you, and we ask for your help for the days to come, so that we can live a life you faith. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for these psalms. We believe uh, this uh, tradition brought down from Moses, the, his uh, experience is so uh, wonderful, and it's also a reflection of a spiritual life journey of many Christians. Father, you pray that your spirit tell us, lead us. Every day we want to spend more time, not just uh, say hi and bye to you. We just really want to sit down and to have spent more time on your words and on praying to you. And we believe your promise that you will keep up, keep us and you, you will guide us. You will answer our prayers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.